Welcome back. I'm George, and we're so glad you're with us today. Today's topic is going to be evaluating our system to make sure that we have the appropriate power, the appropriate equipment, and we're actually we're safe. We don't want to cause any problems. So please bear with me because this is a really simple process, but it's very, very misunderstood. Now, anytime we get out the whiteboard, you know we're going to do a little bit of math. You've seen that on the other videos. Bear with me. It's not that difficult. It, believe it or not, it's relatively simple. So you can use this, it's the, the applicability of what you're going to pick up today can be used through the, at the shop, at the house, at the garage, all over the place. Now, let's talk about our heater elements. Heater elements that we use in our heating process, now whatever that process may be, and more than likely it was probably a still. Um, you can use, this is what's, it's what it looks like, a heater element for a hot water heater. Hot water heaters have heater elements and that's what makes your hot water hot. And that's the electric type. So we've got the 2,000 watt, 120 volt heater element. Now they also come in 240 volt heater elements. And that's one here. This is a 3,500 watt. Now, what's the difference? Well, I've got one out. The, two, well, the 120 volt heater element has two screws on it. So you'd put a hot lead and a neutral lead. And that'll make that sucker work. That's all it is, is one hot, one neutral, and it's not polarity specific. So you've got two screws and you've got two wires. And then of course you've got the ground. Well, on the 240 volt, you've got two screws. And with 240 volts, you also have two wires, which both of them are hot. So you put one here and one there, and then you've got the ground. So there you go. You see, you can, you can wire up a 120 or a 240 volt element already. It's that simple. Now, here are some of the things you can, you cannot wire a 120 volt element to 240 volts. If you do, you're going to have a problem. It ain't going to work. You're going to probably blow it. It'll break, it'll burn, it ain't going to work. And also, people don't dry fire them. And what we mean by dry fire is get them all wired up and then turn them on to see if they're going to work. Make sure they're inside your still already or inside some liquid so that it's got something to dissipate the heat for them because it gets hot pretty quick and it gets really hot. Now, the 240 volt element can be wired with 120 volts or 240 volts. And there are some instances where you may consider that. And as we go through the math, you'll see what I'm talking about because you may want to try to match and mix some of your elements in order to stay within a certain range so that you don't overload your circuit. Now if you do, if you wire, okay, the 3500 watt element, if it's wired at 120 volts, you lose when the voltage goes down, the power goes down. So it's reminiscent to, if you've ever heard of a brownout, how your lights will be dim because you just, there's just not enough voltage going through the system. And in some states they have that, it happens. Um, the same thing happens with a heater element. So remember this, when you wire 120 volts to a 240 volt element, you lose 75% of the power. So this 3500 watt element now becomes an 875 watt element. Good to know. If this was a 5500 watt element, then you wired it 120 volts, it would be 1375 watts. So now why do we say watts? Watts are the power. And what we know about electricity, you know what? Let's go straight to the whiteboard so I don't waste any more of your time. Here's what we know about electricity. There are four values in electricity that we are very accustomed to and we know, uh, the, or we can find out. And that is P for power, and that's normally indicated by a W for watts. We have E, which is electromotive force, which is known as volts. I, which is current, known as amperage. And R, which is resistance. So, if we change these, just because it makes it easier to explain and easier to understand, we've actually got W, V, A, R. Watts, volts, amps, resistance. Well, the point is, is that if you know two of 
any of these, you could figure out the other ones. And that's important to us because we need to understand what the requirement is going to be. Let me explain this. Your household system, if you look inside your fuse box, and you've got this big box, and you've got all these breakers, or in some cases you may have screw-ins, but you've got all these breakers with a switch on them, and the switch is either on or off. And when the breaker trips, the switch it trips off, and you just go back and turn it back on. Well, once you've unplugged something, but you've turned it, you turn it back on. What that indicates is that means that you've exceeded the value of each of one of these breakers, whichever one blew. Now they're normally they're normally listed in your box. You'll see it's written right on there. They're either a 15 amp, a 20 amp. 30 amp, and there's also the potential of a 50 amp. Now, some of your stoves will run on 50 amps. It, it all depends on what the power draw is in the house and uh, what appliances you have. So you have to match the appliance to the circuit so that you don't blow a fuse or create an unsafe environment where you burn up the wires inside the wall and burn down the house. We don't want that to happen either because remember when we talked about this once before, if you, pr if you push enough current through uh, a, a conductor and you're pushing more current than that conductor can handle, the byproduct is heat. And if you push enough current through there, you'll burn the insulation on the wire. You could burn the conductor in half and now you've got a fire hazard and we want to avoid that. So here's what happens though. See, in, in most homes, now let's talk about Europe real quick too because Europe has a 240 volts standard and we have a 120 volt standard but they're wired the same way we're wired so it's single phase meaning you have a hot and you have a neutral and in Europe our hot and neutral is 120 volts and a neutral now for sake of argument I know that electricity and AC runs back and forth but for sake of argument let's just say we have a hot 120 volt and we have a neutral which is a return that's just for sake of argument uh, I know there's a whole lot more into that but we, we don't need to go down that road. Now in Europe they have 240 volts and a neutral. It's the same thing, it's single phase but they just have 240 volts and a, a neutral. So you can wire this in Europe the same way. Alright now in the US our, our standard requirement for household wiring is 12 gauge wire. It's called 12 AWG. That's 12 American wire gauge. And a 12 AWG wire can handle 25 amps. Think about this. The requirement in the United States is that a home be wired with 12 AWG. So we've got a circuit with wires that run out of here and they go to receptacles throughout the home. Now, this circuit is normally going to be connected to a 20 amp circuit, and in some cases, they could be on a 15 amp circuit. It, it just means if you're using more than 15 amps, that circuit's going to blow, and you got to start removing things and or isolate that circuit. But what this means is that this wire is capable of handling 25 amps, although it's on a 20 amp circuit. Why is that? Well we don't want to put a 20 amp wire on a 20 amp circuit because when we get to 20 amps there's a whole lot that's been going on a whole lot of heat's been building up in order to trip that circuit so we put a 25 amp capability capable wire on a 20, 20 amp circuit so that it doesn't reach its maximum threshold and the circuit can break does that make sense it's rather simple and straightforward it's sort of like being safe and then safer than safe. So we, we, we backed off. And that's why most homes are, are wired with a 20 amp circuit. Now you also have 30 amp circuits. And a 30 amp circuit will normally be on a 10 AWG wire. Because a 10 amp, a 10 AWG wire can hold 35 amps. So that's what it can carry. So all your system is rated for 20 amps or 25 amps but you're really running it through a 20 amp circuit, so you are safe. We got that? Now here's where we need to be 
evaluating what we're doing. We need to, we need to evaluate, are we in danger of exceeding this value? And we can do that relatively simple. Oh, I say that, but it is. Here's what we know. See, we know that this element is 3,500 watts. And we know that this element is 2,000 watts. But what we don't know is we don't know what the resistance of that is. Because remember, we had W watts, V volts, A amps, and R resistance. So there are, we've got this Uglies manual. My Uglies manual is sort of like my, my go to handy electrician's guide, electrician code. And it's got this wheel on the front with all these formulas. They're, they're all there and they're relatively easy to understand. What we do know is we do know that volts squared divided by power is going to equal our resistance. Now we want to know resistance first because we're trying to find out amps. We want to know what the amps are. Now there's a way, we, there's one simple formula for that too, but this makes it a whole lot easier for us to explain. We want to know how many amps are going through our circuit and what is the requirement from that element. What, what is the resistance of this element in that 120 volt circuit? So that we can determine what the amp requirement is in order for that to work at 100% efficiency or when it's on 100% of the time. Well, if we did took this, we said, okay, we know we have 120 volts squared divided by, and we're going to use the 2,000 watt heater element on 120 volts. 2,000 volt uh, watts. Go to our calculator, and it's really easy. Is 120 squared divided by 2,000 equals 7.2, 7.2 ohms of resistance. Okay, now that we know what the ohms are, what the resistance is of this heater element, we can easily figure out what is the amperage draw. What is a maximum amperage draw that we have to be concerned about? <laughs> now, in order to figure that out, the formula for that really easy. It is, whoop, there you go, volts divided by resistance equals amps. So we have 120 volts divided by 7.2 ohms equals Sixteen point six amps. So, if we're on a hundred, if we're on a hundred and twenty volt, twenty amp circuit, and we run a two thousand watt heater element on that circuit, we're only drawing at max. We're only going to draw sixteen point six amps. So we are safe. Now remember that wire can can handle twenty five amps. The circuit can handle 20 amps before it trips because that's being safer than safe. And our requirement draw is only going to be 16.6 amps. You've got it figured out. Now, let me make a real quick correction here because I know you've been following through on this. You're going to go, why do you use P? Well, P was, was power. I was kind of used to that. But you know, this should be a W. Um, that, is, that, that was going to be our norm. So we went watts, volts, amps, resistance, and then we had you know the voltage squared divided by W or P, the power wattage. So that settles that. Now you know that a 2,000 watt heater element on 120 volts pulls 16.6 .6 amps. So on a 20 amp circuit, you are safe. Now stay tuned for the next video when we start talking about multiple elements in a system because when you put multiple elements in a system it's a little bit different 
And we'll talk about that here on the next one. So look, man, as always, happy distilling.